Hello there! In this video we will add the right paddle and we will follow a similar process in the previous video, however hopefully it will turn out a bit shorter. And we will discuss a few alternatives to implementing movement for the right paddle. Let's get started! Same as before, we'll start by binding the keys to actions in the project input file. This time we'll use the up and down arrow keys. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's look for up here. It's the U. Up. Right, so the action for this one is going to be right underscore up. Uh, let's go ahead and add the down arrow. So let's look for the D here. There we go. This would be right underscore down. Let's make sure to save this and we're ready for the next part. Cool. Now let's go ahead and add the game object. So we'll go and open up the main collection. Yep, there we go. Let's make some room here. Okay, let's go ahead and add a new game object. We'll call it right underscore paddle, just like the other one. Now let's go ahead and add the sprite to it. Yeah, we're gonna be using the exact same sprite, so same atlas, same sprite, they're both gonna look the same. However, you know, for obvious reasons, the position is gonna be different. So for the x-axis, we're gonna be using 1152. Right, and 324 the Y, just like the other one, and same the Z or Z axis is the same as the other one. We're using this exact number because uh, we're just going to leave the same margin um, to the back of the paddle as the other one. So this is 128, so 1200 width, which is the game height, minus 128 is going to give us the Y axis for this right paddle. Okay, now for the fun part. There are a few ways in which we can implement the logic to move the right paddle. The most obvious one is probably to just copy and paste the left movement script we've got and then adapt it to move the right paddle. But that feels a bit dirty and like we will be duplicating a lot of code that we don't have to. Uh, that isn't necessarily bad, especially when starting out. But um, I want to take this opportunity to showcase one more strategy, like one more thing we can learn about default. Another option is to split the input handling and movement logic into separate scripts and then we can have them communicate with each other through message passing and that's actually a pretty nice design. It's probably what I would go for but uh, for this video and for this tutorial we're going to be using another way because um, we're going to be learning message passing in a future video so I want to take this opportunity and look at something that's called script properties. So for our solution, we'll be using script properties to reuse the movement logic. Uh, it's actually going to turn out a bit simpler, less moving parts. And as always, I'm going to be leaving a link in the description below for further reading into script properties. Okay, let's start by renaming the script because we're going to be reusing it. So no long, it's no longer going to be just for the left paddle. So let's go ahead and let's call it paddle underscore movement. There we go. Just be mindful that when renaming things in default, default will update the game object so they refer to the new script or new files as you rename them. However, it will not update the ID and this could prove troublesome or confusing if we were using message passing for example. Now if you're not familiar with message passing this might not be clear but um, let me go ahead and show you what, what I mean. So if we look into the left script you can see that it's still called the, the left paddle. So if we look into the game left paddle game object, sorry, you're gonna you're gonna see that the script is still has an ID of left paddle. But if you look at the path, it is is correct, right? It is paddle movement now. So let's go ahead and call this paddle movement just for consistency sake, and there's no confusion uh, later on. Another option, which is probably just simpler and safer, is to delete the script and add it back again, which is quite simple. We would just go ahead and delete and add component file. And there we go. It would achieve the same thing in this case. Okay, now we need to modify the script so it can actually handle the right paddle. Let's go ahead and open it. And let's start by adding a couple of properties. 
Okay, we'll start by adding the first one, which is going to be where we configure the op action. So let's get rid of these variables and how we define properties in scripts is that it's through go dot property. There we go. For the name, we said we would call this left. Sorry, we would call this op action. And then for the default value, we will use left up, which is the one we've been using. This way we should keep compatibility like backwards compatibility. The script should behave the same. We're going to test that first in a bit before doing anything with the right paddle. Okay, let's go ahead and add the other property for the down action. So the default value is going to be left down. And oops, I almost forgot. So properties don't support strings as, as values. You need to be using hashes as well. Otherwise, they're, they're not going to be working. They're not going to even appear in the script. And uh, I, I can show you in in a bit. So let's go ahead and see. We've added these two actions. Now let's go and look at our script. So we go to the collection. Now, if, as you can see, we have got two more properties in our script. Uh, these are the, the properties we just defined, right? So this is the beauty of it. If you can imagine, we're going to be adding the same script to the right paddle, and then we can just change the actions. So we're going to be using the new ones we just added in the input file earlier. We're still not done, right? Like we're not using them. Um, I just want to show if, for example, we were using strings, uh, what would happen? So we save this with strings. There are no properties, right? So they, they won't work. We need to be using hashes uh, instead of strings, something that you just have to get used to. Okay, well, with the properties set, now we just need to start actually using them. So how we access them is to the self object. So you do self dot of action instead of left up and self the down action instead of left down. And we should actually be good to go. Let's give this a test for the left button. And there we go. Still working. It's not leaving the screen. Yeah. Now, if you hit the arrow keys, they're not going to be working just yet. Um, let's go ahead and add that now. So let's go back to the collection. Right paddle. Now we are going to be adding the component file with the new script and we change the properties. So instead of left up, it will be right up. Instead of left down, we can do right down. Let's go ahead and give this a test. And yeah. Oh, see what I keep telling you guys. I just did. Um, if you see, it's moving. It's wrong the position. Now, I'm pretty certain it's because I, ch I said the position in the sprite. And I'm hoping you guys noticed earlier on. And yes, I did. So let me return all this to zero and do it in the game object. I. This is why I keep repeating this. I, I keep doing it myself. So now I know why this happens. Hopefully you don't do this yourselves. Um, let's try it again. And yeah, there we go. So awesome. I mean, now, now we have both battles working. We've done some great progress towards the game. Yeah, I, I hope you keep at it and I keep seeing you throughout the series. See you in the next one.